So in this video, we're going to work through an application using vectors where we find the resultant force. And all the resultant force is is the sum of the forces on an object. That's the resultant or the ultimate force that you get after all the forces have been added. What's that net force acting on the object? That's your resultant force. And so the story here is we have two tow trucks. They're attempting to winch this RV out of a ditch. The cable from the first winch uh, exerts a force of 900 pounds. So we're being told that the tension in this cable is 900 pounds in the homework you're going to be given some angles and asked to find the tension so you're going to have to think you know outside of the box a little bit differently than this example but hopefully this pushes you in the right direction without just giving things away so we've got a 900 pound force being applied from winch one so the cable running from the rv to the winch source is going to be 900 pounds and then we have a second cable here, W sub two. It's exerting a 700 pound force on the RV. And it says determine the angle theta for the first tow truck that will bring the van directly out of the ditch along the line indicated. So the idea is, <clears throat> the idea is really simple. We, uh, if we want the van, this RV, sorry, to move along this line in the horizontal plane, and we don't want it to move either this direction or this direction. We need the vertical component of the force from winch one, which is this guy right here. We need this vertical component to cancel the uh, vertical component from the other winch so that these add up to zero, so that the only resultant force is in the horizontal direction. We're being asked to, so essentially we're being asked to find the angle uh, for which the two vertical forces will cancel out so that we can move along the horizontal line. So there's different ways of doing this, but because we focused on establishing coordinate systems a little bit in the series of videos, one way to deal with this is to establish a coordinate system right there where the winches connect in and make this your y and x axes. And if we do that, this angle right here is actually negative 32 degrees and our vectors from our winches. So winch one has a vector associated with it. It has a size and a direction. So we know that to, uh, to get the vector, we just take the size of the vector times a unit vector in the correct direction. But the angle theta is the angle being made with the positive x axis. So we know from trigonometry that we can get a unit vector in this direction by taking the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. And this gives us a vector on the unit circle, a vector of uh, length one, and then we just scale it out with the 900 uh, pounds of force that's being exerted by the cable. And that means that winch two has a tension of 700 pounds in it or force of 700 pounds being applied. And we know the angle it's making with the positive x-axis so we're gonna put cosine of negative 32 degrees, comma, sine of negative 32 degrees. And there's the vector W sub two pulling on the RV in this direction. And what we're wanting to do, like I said, is to find an angle theta so that when we add the vertical components, it equals zero, which means the van won't move up or down because there will be no net force in the vertical direction and that means the resultant force will be just along the horizontal which is what we want to move the van directly out of the ditch so the idea is to find the vertical components so 900 times the sine of theta which is the angle we want to find plus the uh, 700 times the sine of negative 32 degrees we need those vertical components to cancel out. So that means they need to equal zero. So doing a little bit of algebra, that means that the sine of theta is going to need to equal, we'll subtract this from both sides. And divide both sides by the 900 on the sine of theta. So we divide both sides by that 900 and this would reduce down to negative seven ninths. 
times the sine of negative 30 degrees, and then we would take the sine inverse of both sides. And the sine inverse will be great because the sine inverse gives us an angle between uh, negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees, and clearly the angle theta we're after is in the range of the sine inverse function. So we take the sine inverse of negative 7 ninths times the sine of negative 32 degrees. And there's the exact angle that we need. We could approximate this using a calculator or GeoGebra, but we would need to make sure the calculator or GeoGebra was in degree mode, or we would need to convert degrees into radians by multiplying negative 32 degrees by the ratio pi to 180 degrees. I'm not going to bother to approximate it, I know now that I have the angle that it takes to get these two uh, components of the force vector w sub 1 and w sub 2 to cancel out, which means the only force left is in the horizontal direction, which means I can find the resultant force on the system. The resultant force will be the force only in the horizontal direction because I picked theta to cancel the vertical direction out. So my resultant force will be 900 times the cosine of theta, but theta is just the sine inverse of negative 7 ninths times the sine of negative 32 degrees plus from the other, uh, other winch we would have 700 plus 700 times the sine, sorry, times the cosine. I need the horizontal components. So times the cosine of just the negative 32 degrees. And this is going to be a force in pounds because that's what we're measuring force in in this problem, not measuring in newtons or anything like that. So there is the resultant force on the system.